The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, residents of Easton. This is Bill Ames, the co-host of the Film Connection. Uh, to my left is Priscilla Omquist Olson, who is the other co-host, uh, beaming to you from the ECAT Studios on Oliver Street here in Easton. Very pleased to have you with us today. The Film Connection is probably going to its 20th year now, and we like to interview guests from Easton who have been involved in the film business. Um, Many of them have moved on, uh, such as Dino Del Guercio. And uh, so we'd like to stay in touch with them too and have them um, brought in for an interview. So we're very fortunate today to have uh, Mr. Kevin Friend here. Kevin has been a good friend of all of ours. Uh, Kevin is a producer of uh, documentaries and uh, films for um, major networks, I think NBC it is, it has a golf show, and he has a ski show, and he has a polo show, and he has a probably has a poker show too. But he's <laughs> keeping that pretty quiet. So, Kevin, welcome to the show. Bill, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having well, me. We're delighted you're here, and you bring a lot to the table. So, I, I was thinking of a place to start our interview tonight, and I know you were involved with the Hockamock Film Festival way back, and. Um, that's we're celebrating, uh, or ECAT is, thanks to Kim Pincus, the 21st year or 22nd year of the Hockamock Film Festival. And I remember you were you used to conduct those uh, Saturday morning workshops. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them? Then we'll proceed to your career. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, they were. That was great. Uh, Saturday morning workshops happened here uh, at ECAT, and um, basically we would. Uh, have high school students in, and um, it was a um, four, I think it was a four or five week uh, workshop where we would talk about different aspects of production, pre-production, production, post-production, post distribution, marketing, things like that. So it was really good to, uh, to be connected with younger, um, younger filmmakers or up and coming filmmakers. And um, I really had a lot of a lot of fun doing that, and a lot of those same people uh, I wound up working with a little bit later on down the road. Uh, some of them uh, actually worked with me. They reminded me about the workshop. I hadn't even I didn't even remember they were in it. I didn't even remember about the workshop to be honest with you. But uh, well, you did it for I think two or three years. Yeah, it was it, great. Um, it, was, it was good for the for us as the Hockamock because it gave us an outreach to the various schools. Sure. In the, towns yeah. around um, and also like you'd always even though i was teaching the class i would always get something out of it too because yeah. the technology in the in the industry is moving so rapidly that um i would find out little little tidbits about uh you know music banks and um concepts you know websites, new concepts. interesting websites a lot of interesting information that uh, a dinosaur like me could use yeah so it was good it was good it was a win-win yeah, so, um, well, let's uh, tell, tell the crowd at home a little bit about your past. I know you're from Sharon, and uh, how did you get into the video production business? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, so I started out with the, uh, with the Boston Bruins. I was their video coordinator mm -hmm. uh, back in a, another lifetime. And uh, I was with them for a while, and then when we built a new garden, I worked there for a bit. And um, so I did a lot of sports uh, production. And I also was involved, uh, now that I think about it, Bill, I was also involved uh, with the uh, Brookline Community Cable. And I did some uh, documentaries there. That, that kind of, that's where I started out doing documentaries. Uh, Kevin, I want to ask you about uh, how you got started, actually, uh, before all that. What was the f flame that, that, that was lit in your life? Um, it must have gone back to your early days of your youth, right? When something happened to you or you got interested or there was somebody who exposed you to the film business? Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, I got to think about that. Um, yeah, probably uh, back in the day, I used to love going to the cinema. Uh, my grandparents lived in Brookline, so I would go to the Coolidge Corner Theater. And um, 
to this day, I still love going to the cinema, going to a theater. And um, last weekend, we premiered a film at the Jane Pickens Theater down in Newport. And to sit in that theater and see a film on a stage like that is, it just is, it's amazing. It, it, it really does. I'm, I'm glad you asked that question, actually. I, I haven't thought about that in a while. But yeah, going to uh, the Coolidge Corner Cinema, and I can even remember going to an old theater down in Hyannis and seeing uh, Young Frankenstein. Uh, back in the day. So I, I do, I, I've always remembered that and I always kind of wanted to be a filmmaker. And um, so when so, I got out of school, I, I, I went to Providence College. But when I graduated, I actually went on to, uh, took classes at Emerson and Mass College of Art uh -huh. and uh, strictly for film. And uh, so, yeah, I just kind of continued that yeah, for a while, yeah. So yep. if you work for the Bruins, uh, you must have met Bobby Orr at one point. I did, Bill. I, did you? I know you know the Bobby Orr story. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I think it's a great story. Yeah, but, uh, I met Bobby Orr. I was uh, late night cutting uh, video for the coaches, and uh, uh, somebody uh, knocked on the door of the locker room. It was 11 or 12 o'clock at night, and uh, I opened up the door, and it was Bobby Orr. So I uh, try to kind of you know, maintain, and uh, he walked in, and he knew my name, which was like, you know, yeah. amazing. So um, mm -hmm. I pulled out a piece of paper to get an autograph for a friend of mine, you know, yeah, right. which of course was for me, but um, he wound up taking a picture of himself off the wall of the locker room, and, and um, we, we undid the, the frame, and he signed it for me, so um, I still have that, and I, I, it's one of my treasures. <laughs> well, it's a great story, because you meet a lot of interesting people along the way in uh, any, any business, really, for some yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and so can you recall any other uh, celebrities that we might know that you've met? Or just and, people who have influ influenced your life career path-wise? Uh, not really. <laughs> I mean, I've met a lot of celebrities, I guess. Um, you know, I'm really more impressed by the person than the celebrity. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, people who have influenced me as uh, for filmmaking are more other filmmakers, you know. Um, I was always a Jim Jarmusch fan and uh, Wes Anderson and uh, Orson Welles. Uh, so kind of the, uh, kind of the odd uh, type of director thinking outside the box. Um, but ultimately it's all about storytelling. So I think, I think for everybody to be their best form of filmmaker, they should be themselves. So that's what I, well, that would be the thing that I would suggest, yeah. You've told a lot of stories in your time, Kevin, of skiing and playing golf and stuff that makes people happy. You know, I think that's a, a theme, but have you, have you, you've done a couple of dramatic ones, right? In terms of yeah, productions. Um, yeah, we've, we've done, um, we have we we we've, we've done uh, short documentaries on uh, PTSD uh, for uh, veterans uh, returning uh, from the zone and um, and what that is like um, and we've done um, uh, we also did a piece called um, I don't know if I remember the title but we did something on um, on um, help me out here. PTSD and then oh on uh, opioid addiction yeah yeah uh, so we yeah we've seen uh, we've done that as well uh, the obviously there's an opioid crisis in this country mm -hmm. and what what pains me is that a lot of this uh, these things continue and um, you know we, I think we need as a culture as a society I'm I know I'm going off base here but as a you know we we really need to uh, concentrate and try to try to fix these problems. But yeah, so um, opioid addiction. Well, I know yeah. you recently uh, worked on a Borderland documentary <clears throat> about Oaks and Blanche. And uh, how did you find that different in terms of, ed I mean, obviously it's editing, but if you're editing a golf show or a polo show or a ski show, it's, 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 it's editing, but just the whole telling of the story is very different. Um, talk about that a little bit. Sure. Uh, so Borderland um, was a film that uh, that you helped uh, make as well. Um, Borderland was a film uh, that was originally supposed to be about the, the Borderland State Park, um, which is a you know gem of a property that borders Sharon and Easton. Everybody, I'm sure, who's watching this program knows about Borderland. 
yeah. which has actually become quite popular in the last few years, maybe from COVID or I'm not sure oh, the why. the parking but, lot's full on yeah. you know, the weekends and stuff. So as you know, we, we didn't really uh, know what we were going to do when we started it. We knew we were going to make a documentary. Um, but um, when we started doing the research, we would go to... Um, uh, Smith College to see Blanche Blanche Ames Ames archives that were meticulously um, <laughs> featured at uh, at Smith, and we started reading the letters and seeing the photos and uh, reading and doing research more about who who this wonderful dynamic woman was. So uh, the course of the documentary changed, uh, where we went from Park to Oaks and Blanche. And then we really, really, the film is more about Blanche and her amazing work as a, a woman's activist to help uh, pass the 19th Amendment in this area and in the state of Massachusetts in general, but also uh, further with her, uh, her uh, journey on women's rights, uh, particularly uh, for birth control. Uh, she was the first president of the Birth Control League of Massachusetts. So uh, that was... Uh, Maybe to date, my favorite project of all time. Well, it was a it was a big, big, big effort, Kevin. And I I, I took a couple of these road trips with you to uh, Smith College, along with uh, our friend Kay Kleiss, who um, wrote did the um, wrote the script, as we all know, and did was the narrator. But I think in a project like that, um, you get a list of ten people to interview, and you're just hoping to God that one of them really clicks and really blows it wide open. And, we did meet that woman out by Smith College, right? Was that uh, Ann, Ann Biller Clark? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, first of all, I think there was many people that were brilliant in that, oh, of course. In, in that journey. Yeah. Uh, but Ann Biller Clark was, uh, she wrote the book called uh, My Dear Mrs. Ames. Um, fantastic book. Buy it if you can. Help Ann out. But um, it, was, uh, it was she that kind of uh, built the skeleton of the project. We could follow a lot of uh, the leads that she gave us during that interview. And, um, and she was dynamic and really good on camera and, um, and a wonderful source of information for us. And as a filmmaker, she, she helped me uh, kind of mold where we were going. Uh, I don't think I even knew it at the time, but you know, after the interview when we started logging the footage, uh, that's what happened, yeah. Well, let's. So, when you interview someone for like for that project, what's your technique in terms of asking questions or placing the camera or don't look at me, look at the camera, or look, don't look at the camera, look at me, and that sort of thing? Sure. Uh, you know, I feel like going into uh, when you're interviewing somebody, one is you have to really have some knowledge of, of uh, the subject matter and the person in general. Um, you just don't want to show up and, and have a list of questions. You, re you really want to make a connection with somebody. So I think that, um, um, you know, a little small talk just to make sure that everybody's happy in a happy place and comfortable. And, uh, and then, at the, but at the same time, I think you want, to, you want them to know that you are knowledgeable and there's a certain level of respect. Obviously, you, you have uh, a ton of respect for the person who has made their time available for you as a filmmaker, right? Um, but also that, that there is a respect in the room for yourself uh, and that you go into it with some knowledge and then that that person knows that you've done your homework and, the, and they will, uh, it's just a better connection in general, okay? So there's that professional connection, but there's also a personal connection. It's you know not being so eager to ask the next question, but really listening, you know, listening to that person and, and uh, Trying to uh, you know make eye contact and, and, and make them you know, you know make it real make, mm -hmm. so it, so it feels it doesn't just feel like a, a, a conversation but it is a conversation a free flowing conversation that um, mm -hmm. I think is the best way to extract for lack of a better word extract some well that good stuff that uh, that uh, uh, comment you made about knowing something like if someone you were interviewing an author obviously you want to have read the book to some degree um, that sort of thing but Priscilla you've interviewed hundreds of people what's your yeah. take on interviewing people How, well, what's agree. your strategy yeah I agree with uh, Kevin uh, it's really about a conversation in fact when I invite people 
I um, I always close my invitation t with with that. You know, I'm looking forward to a, a very engaging, interesting, informative conversation, and that's what you want. And <clears throat> and I think um, your brother David, <clears throat> Bill, David Ames, he s said to me once because I've interviewed him quite a number of times on different issues, and he said to me once, "My God, it's you're so it's so relaxed here, so easy. It's." I hardly know when we're getting filmed. You know, it's like we're having a conversation in the kitchen, that type of thing. And that's what we want. We want that relaxation to set in so that people feel comfortable sharing their innermost thoughts with somebody that they trust. Mm. And when you have that kind of um, relationship, that trust, that's when people really open up and share, you know, their innermost thoughts. But you have to use little tricks like tell us your most embarrassing moment. No, I, that's your trick, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I always say. You don't well, go with that because no, you can no. fix it. You can fix it in post production. I mean, you, you, know, I you, know. don't, you don't have to go with it. No, but I always ask about. Um, I start with their background. Um, that's why I was interested, Kevin, in <clears throat> hearing about your youth and what sort of uh, moments and impacts some of the experiences that you had influenced your, the, the path uh, that you took mm. uh, in filmmaking. Um, and then I always ask what your challenges have been. What was your biggest challenge? Uh, and finally, what's your vision for the future? Basically, those are the three components of most of my conversations, no matter whether I'm uh, influencing uh, in my series Introduction to Easton's Clergy <laughs> yeah. or uh, Growing Up in Easton, that series, or any of the community forum programs uh, that I, I do. And now I'm interviewing poets, uh, I mean musicians on For the Love of Words, uh, as well as now on the Film Connection. So those are, you know, and, and I think if you ask those three questions, people will give you a full appreciation and understanding of who they are. Yeah. And and so the audience then will really uh, be impressed. In, in well, you have to think on your feet, though, pretty fast, because think, well, oh, is, is, this, is this an opening? It's like that famous Karsh mm -hmm. photograph of Winston Churchill. You know, he, Churchill was, this Karsh was a very well-known English uh, photographer, and there's a famous picture of Churchill scowling at the camera, you know, like, mm -hmm. And the reason was that he was smoking a cigar, and Karsh reached out and grabbed the cigar from him and took the picture right away. <laughs> and that's why Churchill was scowling. Mm -hmm. So he, got, he captured the moment. In other words, he thought on his feet yeah. fast, which in any profession is what you got to do. Sure, sure. So I don't, um, I, I don't have notes when I interview anyone. I don't think ahead. I, don't, I mean, I, I, I learn about, as you mentioned, I have to understand who this person is and what they've done or how they've contributed to society or whatever. Um, but it's just a natural flow. So one answer from the guest uh, influences the next question I might have. So it's a give and take back and forth. Mm. Uh, and often the uh, guest asks me questions. <laughs> Not right. often, but it happens. Uh, tell us about your s series um, of the, the polo players at Newport. I attended the, your debut Friday night, the film you did, uh, which was, I thought, really excellent because it was a little more eclectic. It wasn't just polo all the time, but it was the players in different cities seeing that where their teams that come to mm -hmm. Rhode Island, where, where, they, where they practiced and who they are. But uh, it's, that's your story, right? Sure. Well, we've been, um, uh, we run the production down at Newport International Polo, which is actually in Portsmouth. So it's every Saturday afternoon at five o'clock, and it's a wonderful event. Um, it's basically one big party, one big tailgate, and they uh, invite um, polo teams from uh, many different countries and cities. And um, so it's a great, it's a great event. They've been doing that for I think thirty-two years now. I think mm -hmm. this is the thirty-second year. So um, we've gotten to know them quite well, and they have a very eclectic uh, commentator, a gentleman named William Crisp. Uh, a real blue-blooded Englishman, a charmer, who loves to uh, loves to uh, you know commentate uh, both positively and negatively, and it's quite funny actually. So we decided to um, take that show on the road. So we would go. We've been to Italy, 
and uh, in Ireland and Jamaica mm -hmm. uh, with with a few of the characters from Newport Polo to see what it's like for the uh, for the on the other side what the you know where these people are from and um, what they're training and what sure. their lives are like so it's a kind of a reality type of series uh, called the Polo Passport. Well, I, I've which been, came from Winston Churchill, by the way. Did he play polo? No, that was his uh, phrase. Uh, polo was like a passport. Well, that's true. He, so he, he, mi he might have, yeah. Made interesting people. So we made a film out of it. Um, it's, it's actually going to be a docu-series, but we decided to make a film out of it to kick off this season. It was also a fundraiser for the Ukrainian uh, team that was in town last weekend oh, for uh, the opening uh, of the opening How did match. Newport do against Ukraine? Uh, Ukraine won, actually. Well, that's sort they, of nice. They won. But the, the Ukraine team, uh, just as an aside, it was actually a gentleman from Ukraine, but also uh, somebody from England, somebody from Poland, and somebody from the United I States. Guess, yeah. Kind of uh, symbolic of the, uh, the nature of uh, yeah. that, uh, that battle. Well, yeah. I hope that Ukrainian victory bodes well for the country. Me too. Yeah. Me too. So, Kevin, yeah. uh, I've been to some of the polo there. It's, I find polo, I mean, if you're into horses and whatever, that's great. But if you're just a casual observer, the problem... I think everybody has this. Sometimes the action is taking place 100 yards away yeah. across the field. So do you use drones or anything like that to sort of for your productions? Uh, we do use drones uh, more more for the post-production than yeah. the uh, the live feed. So we do a live feed. They have a jumbotron uh, at that field. And actually the field in Newport is, is, is technically a smaller polo version of, of an actual polo field. Hmm. So you're not you're not as far away from the action as you would be in a standard polo field. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's an exciting sport, certainly, yeah. and you see these people of all ages and, you know. Yeah, and the women are just as good polo players as yeah, the men, yeah. too, so that, that's, that's cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's great to see the connection between, um, you know, man and animal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the only sport, really, that has that, mm -hmm. and they're, they're actually tremendous athletes. So, um, yeah. there you go. Well, you got to be an athlete because it's a dangerous sport, and you don't want your horse uh, collapsing underneath you. No, that you don't. That would not be good. That's a good one, Bill. You don't want that to happen. No, <laughs> no, sure. It's like fox hunting. You know, see these amazing films of fox hunting. And so, Kevin, full speed. Yeah. Tell us, um, what 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 does your future hold? Uh, is there something that you haven't done that you'd like to pursue? Yeah, so uh, there's a couple of projects that um, we're still doing, uh, Golfing the World, which is this golf program we've been doing. This is our 26th season of that, um, which I really like. It's, uh, I like doing that, but I, I do want to do more, more uh, uh, serious documentary uh, type of features, uh, something, that, um, for, you know, something that means a little bit more. Um, there is a, a project that we uh, are considering right now that we've, we've started... Uh, um, it's about the weaponization of the flag. It's based on mm -hmm. a Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize uh, photo um, uh, called The Soiling of Old Glory, which was a photo taken by a Boston Herald photographer uh, back in the days of busing uh, on Boston City Hall. So we, that's a project that we're working on right now. Um, has a little, to, little bit to do with racism. And um, again, sadly, just like I'm thinking about this borderland, you know, there are still to this day uh, so many issues that haven't been resolved and uh, like voter suppression and women's rights. So I think some of these uh, some of these issues, uh, you know, we, I would like to like stay involved with and try to uh, tell the story, paint the picture and maybe educate people a little bit. And um, have you thought about doing another biography of someone? Well, uh, we were talking about the Bill and I were talking about this today. Mm -hmm. There is there is. Uh, uh, tremendous interest to do a uh, a biography on uh, Benjamin Butler, Ben Franklin Butler, which who was uh, Blanche's grandfather. Mm -hmm. So um, there is, uh, as I said, there's a, a lot of interest to do that. Um, there is a ton of information on him. Uh, the more I delve into it, uh, it, it's just a fascinating character. And he was military, right? Well, yes and no. Um, uh, you know, I don't think we have enough time right now to actually get into it, but it, he he was not accepted to uh, West Point, which 
uh, irked him his entire life. But yes, he became a general and was one of uh, Lincoln's uh, five chosen generals at, at a certain crossroads in the Civil War. Um, and, and yet was, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say fired, but he was let go for some of his military failures, uh, particularly at Fort Fisher. Uh, and, and which was taken over by his eventual son-in-law, Blanche's father, Adelbert Ames. It's really a fascinating story. So we may or may not go down that road. Uh, Bill, you want to jump in? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's uh, right. Sometimes um, you can bite off more than you can chew, but uh, good luck to you on that one. That's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, a big, it's a big one because, you know, he, Lincoln knew him. People didn't like him. People liked him, and he was senator from Massachusetts in Congress, and very instrumental in a lot of things. And very much a liberal-minded guy from Lowell, Massachusetts, where all the mill owners were, and, and they were they were pretty much liberal-minded people too because they had. A, Don't you think that really influenced Blanche? She, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, look how she was a liberal woman, uh, totally. Uh, uh, out of her uh, years ahead of her times, there weren't most women were very conservative. They were uh, when they got married, they were just you know housewives and 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 there to serve their husbands and so forth. I mean, she was just this wonderful free spirit, very independent and uh, open-minded, mm. liberal, progressive woman. Mm. So um, yeah, yeah, definitely well, influ She was influenced by. Her father, Delbert, who was the Reconstructionist governor of the state of Mississippi, oh. uh, right after the Civil War, which was which was a horrible time for uh, African Americans in this country, and he fought hard for their rights, and she was witness to to that, and um, and plus, her grandfather, uh, Ben Ben Butler, um, he was really one of the one of the first politicians, certainly to. Um, uh, help affect and change laws for women and children that were working in the mills uh, in, in Lowell yeah. and Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it, well, you've been a great guest, Kevin, as I knew you would be. And you make a wonderful contribution uh, to the world in, in general and obviously to Easton, what with Borderland and uh, some of the other things you've done, especially with the Hockamock Film Festival. I know you teach at Stonehill. You're an adjunct professor or teacher, whatever they call sure. it. At Stonehill, that's a very nice contribution too. So, I want to thank you for joining us on thank the you. Film Connection. And um, Priscilla, thank you for having me on the show oh, as well. Thank you for being our guest. You you are as interesting and informative and engaging as any of our guests, right, Bill? Absolutely, Priscilla. <laughs> Do you want to have the last word? For, take us out. Oh, of course. Thank you, audience, for being with us. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, Kevin, Bill, and I have really uh, enjoyed presenting it to you. Until next time, be well.